Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen with BassResource.com. Today we're going to do one of my favorite things. This is one of the things that one of the first things I learned to do when I was bank fishing, and it's one of the things that got me addicted to bass, uh, to catching bass, and that is bed fishing. Uh, we're in early spring. The fish are in full spawn. Like I said, the fish are in full spawn. And I'm cruising the banks right now looking for beds. Um, and I'm going to go try to hit all of the details, all the things that I've learned over the years about catching bass on the bed. Um, yeah, that's a bed right there. Anyway, I just pulled up on one. <coughs> now, some of the things that I look for, for to find a spawning area, um, I'm looking for a protected pocket or protected cove uh, usually on the north side of the uh, of the bank or whatever the lake uh, somewhere that the, the north wind and the west wind doesn't don't hit and that's the area that'll warm up first um, but after a little while it doesn't really matter they'll spawn anywhere as soon as the water temperature gets gets pretty stable I'm looking for hard bottom as you can see behind me I've got some sand on the bank I've got Georgia red clay and I've got rocks so I know that there's a hard bottom around here so then I just start cruising the shallows and I'm looking to spook a male bass off the bed when I do that I stop I turn around I come back and I just watch and I try to figure out where he comes back to to locate exactly where that bed is and um, you don't always see a nice beautiful white patch of cleared cleared ground where this bass is spawning um, I've got one right here. I got a I got a pair of bass spawning right here. I just saw them, and you can't see the bed because it kind of blends in with everything else. But I see the two fish. <coughs> Man, I'm wheezing. <coughs> just get over a nasty cold, actually the flu. But anyway, um, so I see the bed. I see the two fish, and um, and I locate exactly where that bed is, or where they where that male bass comes back to. It gives me a good idea. Then I stop and I try to figure out how long does it take that bass to come back to the bed. Not only how long when I first spook it, but how long when I make that first cast. And if it's more than 30 seconds, I go somewhere else because, you know, 45 seconds, a minute for them to come back each time you make a cast can take all day long. And if it's not a 10 to 15 pound bass, it ain't worth it. So, um, once you've located that bed, the key part in, when you're on a, in a boat is positioning. You don't want to position your boat to where you're blocking deep water access because then when you spook that female, she's going to deep water. And if she goes under your boat, you're liable to spook her for good. So back up, go try to get away from that deep water access. I like to get up against the bank to where I can see them and I can still fish them. Um, and I'll anchor down. Dummy me today, I forgot my anchors, but I use my trolling motor and I use the, the uh, my back motor and I just go put them down in shallow water and then I start casting at the fish. Now another thing to remember when uh, when you're bank fishing or when you're bed fishing is that bass don't like to bed real close to each other. They don't like to be within sight of each other. And they also like to find a place that's pretty protected. Up against the grass where three sides are protected, they only have to guard one side from a bluegill. Um, or up against a stump or, or something that they're protected on three sides. Um, that's ideally. A lot of times you don't see them that way. But ideally, that's where they want to be. So um, that's kind of the areas you're looking for. Now, another thing I need to address is what you're wearing. When I'm bank fishing, I'm wearing full camouflage. Camouflage hat, everything else. When I'm out on the water, I'm wearing soft colors. Or, or I guess as women like to call them pastels. But I'm wearing these soft colors that blend in with the sky and they don't spook the fish so much. That means the red hat has got to go. This is what I wear. Okay, Nice long bill to block out the sun. It's got these, these flaps that go down all the way in your neck. But the reason I like them is, is that they cover the back of your, your ears. Ideally, for, for bed fishing, you want sun. And what you, the, the best way to set up, or, or the optimum way to set up, is with the sun at your back. But when you do that, the problem is the sun shines in on the back side of your sunglasses and it block, it keeps you from being able to see as well as you need to. So I get something with ear flaps. Flaps that cover my ears and cover the back of my sunglasses and that's usually ideal. Soft color, doesn't spook them so much. So I covered the dress, I covered um, how to find them. Let's talk about equipment. I like to use um, 
uh, medium heavy heavy rods with with jigs you know something that's on the bottom so I can make good um, uh, so it will drop down onto the beds um, I usually experiment with a lot of things I'm not picky about what I bed fish with I love uh, the little oh, the yum craw and I don't know what it's called um, but it's it looks just like a crawfish and I put it on a on a heavy magnum spot remover magnum spot remover is, remover is my favorite jig head to fish on beds just because when it lands it lands with the with the bait straight up it lands and stands that bait up so when the bass grabs it it's going to grab the hook almost every time now i don't particularly like to use lizards the reason i don't like to use lizards is because they're so long and the fish tend to grab hold of the tail and just to move them off of the bed and nine times out of ten you're not going to get the hook in their mouth so i try to shy away from long baits um, I will use a yellow lizard to, to tick off the bass. I found um, years ago that, they get, that a banana yellow lizard from Zoom really tends to tick off the bass. So that's kind of what I'm looking for. Somewhere on that bed is what we call the sweet spot. A turkey goblin. Anyway, sweet spot. And, sometimes, and usually it's no bigger than a coffee cup. And your goal is to find that spot. Now, how do you go about finding that spot? Well, let me tell you. You will know by the reactions of the male bass when you get to that spot. So you throw across, you'll cast across the, the bed, bring it through the bed, and it, that, that sweet spot is usually on somewhere close to the middle, doesn't have to be, um, and it's on something dark. There might be a root there, or I've even seen it on a Coke can sitting on the bottom. But there's usually something in the middle of that bed that he's got that's known as a sweet spot. And it's whatever, I guess it's whatever place the uh, female will rub her belly up against when they're spawning. But anyway, so I'm looking for that sweet spot. So let me talk about what I do to get these bass to bite. When I get them locked on their bed, okay, my goal is to aggravate the living snot out of them, okay? So I keep casting to, I don't cast away from the bed. If I see them swim off the bed, the biggest thing, don't cast at them when they're off the bed. Once they get back onto that spot, you cast to them, and you keep casting to them, and you keep casting to them, and you, they'll, they'll gradually, more and more, they'll get on, they'll get locked onto that bed, and they'll keep turning around back at your bait. That's when I start beating them up with that heavy weight, okay? I've got a quarter of an ounce on here. I like to use a three quarter of an ounce, but it doesn't really have to be. Um, I can't see this bed very good. I've got pollen in the way, but I can just see it when he go crosses over the bed. And I'm just shaking it, and I'm trying to find that little sweet spot. I'm just going to keep making casts. See, I just landed on top of his head, and it really ticked him off. He went, Ooh, and he jumped right. He, he darted at it, and then, or darted away from it, and then turned right back around to it. And I'm just going to shake it and see what he does. Okay, all I, can see, all I can see right now is his tail on top of the bed, so I know he's not looking at my bait. Well, he just turned a little bit, okay? And what I want to do is I want to keep hitting him in the head with the bait, okay? See how he positions. If you can see the fish good, great. I mean, that's awesome. See how he positions on that bed and, uh, and bring the bait over top of the back. He can't see when the bait's behind him. Come over top of his back and not drop it down right on his nose and hit him in the nose a few times. Watch him flare open and open that mouth and grab that bait. It's more of a reaction strike when you do that. Or I'll take and I'll drag the line along his side, or the female, if she's locked on the bed, drag along the side, and then I'll just bump him with the weight. I'll just jerk it up and pop him with the weight a few times, and he'll turn around and he'll grab a hold of it. You know, beat the snot out of him. It's not going to hurt him. I mean, it sounds bad, and, and the way I'm saying it, it sounds bad, but it's not so bad. Um, you're just trying to get them mad at whatever's invading their bed. And so that's all I'm doing. I really cannot see this bed right now. I see very little of it because the pollen just moved into the, into the, in the, in the way. Boy, he's turning around quick on it. You love the ones that turn around really fast on the bed. Okay. They're the ones that are catchable.
There we go. <laughs> and that, my friends, is how you do it. Bed fishing takes a lot of patience. But you got to beat the snot out of them to get them locked down. Once you get them locked down, you start getting aggressive, more and more aggressive, until they uh, open their mouth and put the bait in it. Small baits, not big lizards. Um, big, big lizards are pretty frustrating. But anyway, like I always say, visit BassResource.com for the answer to all your questions about bass fishing. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Hit the like button on this video see if you like it. And uh, have a great day. This is awesome.